Hello everyone and welcome to Tutor Terrific. In this video I'm going to do another calculator tutorial for you on the Texas Instruments TI-30XS MultiView Calculator. Now this is a second generation MultiView Calculator and it's uh, based off of this one which I've reviewed already, very popular review, the TI-34 MultiView. It has the very basic uh, setup just like the 34 does. Um, it's a very similar operating system and style of layout to the 34 MultiView, but it's just a little bit easier to work with, and it's immensely popular for its really nice design. Um, it is an equation operating system based calculator, like the other one in, uh, that I just showed on the screen. And um, that means that we plug in expressions into the calculator, and then we press enter. The MultiView feature has to do with what's called math print a really, really nice feature that allows you to see your expressions as you would in your textbook rather than on a standard calculator. This is how we turn the calculator on, the on button, and you know it's on when you have a little LCD blinking at the top left corner. So let's do a basic calculation right now, um, just checking that order of operations works correctly. I like to do 7 times 8 minus Three, just to make sure it does the multiplication before the subtraction. And we should get 53 for our answer. And we do. This calculator puts it on the same row so that you have more room for more calculations underneath. Such as, let's try negative 7 times 8 minus 3. Now how do I get a negative on this calculator? Well, for most Texas instruments, there's a little button down here um, that has the minus sign next to it. And so I can do... Um, watch what happens when I start typing. Negative 7 times 8 minus 3. You can see it populating the next row down. This answer should be quite different. Negative 59. It's still doing the multiplication before the subtraction. So order of operations is correct. Now, let's say you wanted to clear your screen so that you wouldn't see a bunch of calculations all at the same time. You would press the clear button right here. So it clears out the calculation. I want you to know that if you want to repopulate uh, the screen with a calculation you previously did, you don't have to type it in all again from your memory. You can use what's called the memory feature by pressing second enter. And that can give you your previous calculation or by scrolling up, which can give you your previous calculation. Let's say I wanted to edit this guy. Let's say I wanted it to be 2 times negative 6 divided by 4. Do I have to just start over? No. What I can do is press the up arrow twice, press enter, and it will allow me to edit the calculation that I did. So I wanted it to be 2 times negative 6. So I'm scrolling over with this, uh, this little cursor here to the negative 6, and you see the delete button? I can either delete all these operations and press negative 6 times 4 or alternatively I can do the following I can overwrite my calculation now for cal these calculators if you have two signs next to each other before a number such as multiplication and then negative you might want to put the uh, negative in parentheses so I can start typing negative 6 and these are the parentheses buttons right here open parenthesis and close parenthesis, like so, and then divide by 4. So this is called the overwrite feature. Now if you didn't want to do that, you could do uh, another option. Again, I'm going to select it. Say I wanted to just insert those few extra keystrokes. I can press second insert. Now you see the 6 is blinking in and out with a little uh, underscore sign underneath it. That means if I the next button I press will insert that keystroke in front of the 6. Check that out. So now it says 2 times parenthesis 6. I want a negative so I'm going to put another negative there and then watch as I scroll to the right. It starts blinking with the black dot again. That means it's going to go back to overwrite mode if I keep typing keystrokes. What I want to do is I want to insert again in this position a close parenthesis. And at any point I can press enter to evaluate or I can scroll to the end if I want to see the whole thing first 
and then I can press enter to evaluate. Of course, I would get negative three. This calculator can do on the same screen up to four calculations. And so you can see your past four calculations on one screen. Now another neat feature this calculator has, like all the multi-view calculators, is the toggle feature right here, which allows you to toggle between fraction view and decimal view. So I'm going to set up a calculation that gives you a proper fraction. And first I want to make sure in the mode category, I want to make sure I'm in classic mode, not math print mode for this demonstration, because I want to show you how annoying it can be to work in classic mode when you have a math print mode. To get out of menu, we press second mode, which is the quit feature. Now, I want to explain, for those of you who don't know, I've been using it a little bit. The second feature right here allows you to access the uh, functions on top of each button, and they're on this calculator in green. There's lots of color combos for this calculator. So if I press second and any button, it will activate the feature directly above. So when I press second mode, it activates quit instead of mode. You know you've got the second button depressed when you see a little second symbol up there on the screen. It's tiny. Also notice that I'm in degree mode, which is another mode option at the top of the screen, which means when I use sine, cosine, and tangent, it will uh, assume I'm in uh, plugging in degrees for angles. Okay. So I'm going to show you uh, that toggle feature, the decimal to fraction back and forth toggle. So I'm going to type in a very simple calculation that's going to give me a fraction, 7 minus 4. And um, then I'm going to, oh, shoot, I want that all in the denominator. So I have to, I can press second delete to insert some parentheses. So the calculator knows in classic mode that this is my entire numerator. Then I divide by something larger, so 8 plus 6, for example. So it's going to give me, naturally, a decimal. And it's not a nice decimal, but um, it's a decimal nonetheless. And by the way, it just, just points out that I uh, want to show you that these um, numbers are uh, defaulted to floating point style. And so we see a large decimal. And what floating point means is we have a bunch of digits. And the decimal can be used and moved around in a different spot. So I can have a certain number of digits before and after. As you can see, there's um, up to 10 digits by default on this calculator that are used. Now, if I want to see this answer instead as a fraction, check this feature out. Press that toggle button, and it gives me the fraction version down here, 3 14 If I press toggle again, it sends me back to decimal mode. Now I'm going to do a calculation like that previous one, but I'm going to be in math print mode so I can show you the difference. So again, press the mode button, scroll down on your mode button until you see classic highlighting and blinking, and move the cursor over one until math print is blinking, press enter to highlight it. Now we're going to be in math print mode, which is what most people default to when they have this calculator. To get out of the mode menu, we press second mode which is quit. Now, I'm going to do that same calculation. I have another option, okay? And that is N over D. So watch this. 7 minus 4 on top, and then on bottom, 8 plus 6. So this is what the math print feature does. It allows me to see it like this. And it will actually give me the answer as it would appear in a textbook in fraction mode first. And I can, of course, toggle back and forth between that and the decimal. Look at how it's showing the fraction when I toggle back and forth. Not as a slash fraction, but a normal top and bottom vertical oriented fraction. I want to also show you square roots and how math print does those. So I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to go back to classic mode and I'm going to show you square roots. So in classic mode, to get to square root, you press second x squared, and it gives you a square root with a parenthesis. And now we'll put what we want to find the square root of inside. 8 times 8, for example, which is 64. The square root of 64 is 8, so we should accept 8. Okay, so pretty basic. Now, in um, math print mode, which I'll go into now, I want to show you the difference. 
So if I press second squared, look at the difference. It has the square root radical symbol over my entire expression right now. And I don't need parentheses because it follows me as I type numbers, which is really, really interesting. But I'll do the same calculation. And I press the arrow button here, the, the right arrow, to get out of the square root. And now I press enter, and you can see the same result. So it's quite nice. Now, just so you can see, let's do the square root of some irrational, uh, of some number that doesn't have a perfect square root, like 6. Again, press the, as you see, it's, we're still in the square root when it's blinking with the little arrow symbol, but if we press right, we're outside of it. And you can see it's going to default to just writing the square root of 6. So, for example, if I had some number in here that could be simplified, it would do that simplification for me. Let me show you the square root of 8. But first, let me toggle back and forth. This gives me the irrational number for square root of 6, and I can toggle back to the radical version. But now, let's do one that can be simplified. In math print mode, press second square root, 8. Now, you know you can pull out a 4 from that and get 2 root 2. Let's see what happens when I press enter. Look at that. It gives me the simplified version of square root of 8. And um, just so you know, if you press enter over and over again, it will repeat the same calculation. Now I want to look at um, other exponent-based buttons on this calculator. So as I taught, pointed out, x squared here, if I type a number and then press that button, it will put a little exponent by it, squared, which is equal to 25, as you know, 5 squared. Now if I go back and I press classic mode, it's going to look a little different. So 5 squared. It's not really elevated, is it? It's still a superscript, but it's not elevated above the number. Of course, it's going to give you the same answer. Now, let's look at higher order exponents. How do I do higher order exponents on this calculator? We use what's called the caret button right here. Okay, so let's try 5 to the ninth. Okay, in classic mode, this is what it would look like. Okay, uh, 5 to the ninth, which is quite large. Um, let's switch back to math print mode, like so. Now in math print mode, if we were to do 5 to the 9 using the same buttons, look what happens when I press the caret. It goes immediately to the superscript position for exponents, and it types a little 9. Now I'm still in the exponent positions, so if I type more numbers, it will evaluate them for me. Now, keep in mind that this calculator cannot find the exponent, uh, the <laughs> A base raised to such an exponent as this, we'd get overflow because there's too much calculation to do. Um, this calculator can work into the hundredth power, but uh, not much higher than that. Definitely not an order of magnitude higher. Now, if you have an error like this, or a syntax error, which means you've typed something wrong, all you do is press clear, and it'll take you back to the error, which is, for me, the exponent. So, of course, I'm going to delete all of those extras. And before I type something else, I'm going to make sure I press the right arrow to get out of the exponent position. Okay, so we have our exponent. So that's what it looks like in math print mode. What if you wanted to do higher order uh, radicals, like the third cube root or the fourth root? Going back to classic mode, I want to show you what that looks like right now. Um, classic mode, we press second caret to get the higher order um, root, but we need a number in front before we type that uh, series of buttons. When you don't type that series of buttons, what it's going to assume is your previous answer, that's what ANS stands for, your previous answer to your previous calculation is the degree radical you want to use. And of course, that's not true for us, that would be crazy. Let's say I wanted to find the cube root of something, I'd press 3, then press second caret. Now it's going to evaluate the cube root, so that little x means the previous number is my radical degree. And let's do 27. Notice how, don't ask me why, it does not put a parenthesis for this type of radical, higher order radicals, only for the square root. So you need to be careful if you have multiple things multiplied together or subtracted, you want to put them all in parentheses inside this. Now let's look at the math print mode 
In math print mode, things look a little different when I use this series of buttons for a higher order root. Ah, look at that. It makes the root uh, degree in the spot you'd assume it would be in. And now again, I want cube root. And so I'm gonna scroll back to the left and I can adjust that to be a cube root. Now look at that, that looks great. That looks like what you're used to seeing. So I'm doing a 27 inside there and I press right as usual to get out of the cube root now. And I get three like before. Now guys, one more thing I wanna show you. Scientific notation button here, times 10 to the N. And so in math print mode, which I'm in right now, it looks really snazzy. For example, if I wanted to write out and calculate five times 10 to the six, I'd press five and then press that button times 10 to the V. And look at that. It populates that all of the screen and allows me to put the, the exponent that I want, which in this case would be six. And then I can switch to the standard uh, notation, which would be five million. The toggle switch will not allow me to go back and forth between scientific notation and standard notation on this calculator. Now let's say you wanted to do something and uh, you typed it in wrong so that it, the calculator can't read it, such as five times six minus two, for example. I did not open that parenthesis. I closed one that was never open. That's an example of something the calculator can't do. So it's gonna give you a syntax error. When you press clear, it's gonna go back to the very spot where the error was generated. And of course, that is right here. And you can, of course, if you wanted that to be five times six, we already know we could just put a times there and the calculator will do the proper um, order of operations. Next, I wanted to show you how this calculator handles all things trig because it's different than the TI-34 multi-view from my previous video on that calculator. Um, in that calculator, they had uh, uh, sort of imprisoned all of the uh, trig functions in one button called trig and it was actually um, up here as a second to pi. In this calculator they have to the joy of all those doing geometry classes or algebra classes in which trig is a little bit of a subject, uh, they've uh, moved those out and freed them to be their own buttons. Now you need to make sure you are in the proper mode when using these buttons for your calculation. If you are calculating sine, cosine, or tangent of angles and radians, you need to switch your mode because it defaults to as we see here, D, E, G. If you want to be in radian mode, you uh, very first at the top, you see we're on that selection between degrees and radians and gradients. We don't use gradients very much. So if you wanted to be in radian mode, we just toggle over and press enter until it was highlighted. For now, I want to stay in degree mode. So if you wanted to calculate, for example, the sine of 58 degrees, we'd press sine 58. Make sure it says DEG up there at the top and press enter. It gives us the sine of 58. And uh, we could do that similarly with cosine and tangent. Now, I want to point out something. There is no button for cosecant, secant, or cotangent functions. Because uh, they are not used very much, I'm guessing, and they didn't want to make special buttons for them. It's very easy, actually, to generate cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Cosecant, for example, is the reciprocal of sine. So what we would do is we'd actually do, uh, we could do a, a fraction in math print mode. One divided by the sine of 58. That is the cosecant of 58. And notice how I got out of the denominator by pressing the right arrow. If I press the left arrow, it'll let me go back in the denominator if I need to add or edit some things. And if I wanted to go to the numerator and edit some things, I'd press the up arrow. Quite nice feature. Okay, and this will be the cosecant of 58. Let's say we wanted to do an inverse trig function. So we have a ratio of right triangle sides or something, and I wanted to find the angle. I would use an inverse trig function. Those are uh, correctly placed. The second options for each of those trig function buttons. So inverse sine is found by doing second sine. Inverse cosine is found by doing second cosine. And inverse tangent is found by doing second tan. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the inverse of uh, the inverse sine of 1. 
This is going to calculate a nice angle for me. And so the, to do this, I press second sign and then I put a one in there and then I press enter. That gives me 90, 90 degrees. Okay. Let's say instead I was in radian mode. I'm in degree mode, so it gives me 90 degrees. So let's switch to radian mode. Now I'm going to call the same calculation, pressing second enter. Aha! Not only does it show me the calculation, it completes the calculation, and now I see it's in radian mode. If I press the toggle switch, it gives me, oh, look at that, pi over 2. For those of you who have done a little trick with the unit circle, you know that 90 degrees and pi over 2 are the same which is really neat. So I could toggle back and forth between that transcendental number and pi over two. I also wanted to point out for you that pi has its own special button on this calculator and it's right there, pi. And so I can of course find, let's say, the tangent of pi. Now that I'm in radian mode, tangent of pi, no problem. I can also put fractions in here with the n over d or without the n over d and just do slash. For example, tangent of pi over four. And then, of course, we press right arrow twice to get out. And we know that equals 1. Now, if I was in the wrong mode, if I was in degree mode instead, like I just switched to, and I tried to do tangent pi over 4, it would not give me tangent of pi over 4 radians. It would give me tangent of pi over 4 degrees. And that's not what I'm anticipating is the correct answer there. So you've got to make sure you stay in the right mode or at least you know which mode you're in. So that covers trig on this calculator. The last thing I wanted to show you guys is something I didn't show you in the previous video and that's a little bit of statistics. This calculator could do some basic statistics and uh, log bivariate data. For example, actually it can, uh, it can do three column data. What you would want to use this for, maybe some stats. You can't graph on this calculator but you can look at stats. So for example, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm in L1, which is basically column one of the data. I'm just gonna put one uh, for the first entry and then press enter to li list the second entry. I'm just gonna continue to place the uh, natural numbers incrementing all the way to eight. So that's my first list, numbers one through eight. If I wanna switch to the second list, for example, like so, let's say I am gonna increase by half starting with zero. So zero, enter, 0.5, enter, one, enter, 1.5, enter. See how it's matching them with one of the members of list one? That's how this works. Um, can it keep going here? Two, 2.5, three, 3.5, and then we've ended at eight. Now, this calculator can do a couple things with this data, some basic statistics. If I press second data, it allows me to uh, look at one variable stats or two variable stats. I'm going to look at one variable stats and I'm going to um, take the data as L1 and frequency and it allows me to calculate a couple things. Ah, it allows me to, it lets me look at, for example, the number of data points, the mean of the data points, the standard deviation of the data points. Uh, <laughs> really neat, really neat. The sum of all the data points, the sum of the data points squared, the min data point, the quartile one of the data point, the median of the data point. Look at all of that. That's stuff that basic statisticians need to use. In addition, if we go back and clear that out, and we go back to the list and we press second stat again, we can do two variable statistics. So I would choose um, uh, one as my input and one as my output list. So I'll choose X data as the list input and I'll choose L2 as the list output and press calculate. And it's going to list a few more things. The mean of both, the standard deviation of both, the sums squared both, and some two variable statistics like the the um, coefficient of correlation, so R is the correlation coefficient. This has perfect correlation because it's a straight line, so the correlation is one. Really interesting stuff here.
if you wanted to clear your data lists, you could certainly do that by pressing, if you're in the data itself, pressing data again. And um, if there's ever a menu like this, you can either scroll to the menu item you want to activate or just press the number next to it. So I just pressed number one, which cleared list one. If I press data again, I can either scroll down and press enter or press the number two at any point and it clears that list as well. So I get a fresh slate. If I wanna get out of the data window, I would press second, quit. All right guys, that's been a short introduction to this calculator. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching. This is Falconator signing out.